Well, this is my review of the film Raw Deal. No, not that Raw Deal, but rather the incredible black and white crime film from 1948 that once again paired director Anthony Mann with expert cinematographer John Alton. It's a story of a man who has broken out of prison and he's on the run. And it stars Dennis O'Keefe, Claire Trevor, Marsha Hunt, and Raymond Burr. I thought this was an excellent crime film, with plenty of suspense and action. And I'll give a summary of the film, spoiler free, and then offer some analysis and closing thoughts. Well, the film opens up outside of a prison. We hear a woman's voice doing the narration, speaking of the man that she loves that will be breaking out of prison that night. And listen to that creepy theremin music with the scene. It's all set. 11.30. That's the word I'm bringing him. I don't know which sounds louder. I heal from my heart. So we see the character of Pat Regan. He's played by actress Claire Trevor and she's on her way to visit with her fella in lockup. And you know, I see her, and I'm always reminded of her troubled, drunk character from Key Largo. Remember that? Well, anyhow, she wants to see her guy, but is told that she needs to wait as he's currently seeing someone else. And sure enough, we see the character of Joe Sullivan. He's played by awesome, tough guy actor Dennis O'Keefe. I haven't seen many of his films, but I plan to in the future. And he's there in lockup, and he's meeting with his lawyer's assistant. It's Anne Martin, played by lovely actress Marcia Hunt. And as she pleads for him to try to, you know, make parole, we see that maybe she's taken to this tough guy. Now, also watch some of the shadows and the mastery of light here from John Alton's cinematography, like that brief sparkle to her eye. You know, this film is great, and it's just getting started. Well, Pat goes in next to see Joe, and she too has that sparkle in her eye. Now, these are two women who have an interest in this character, Joe, different interests, but Pat is clearly head over heels for this guy, and she quietly breaks the news of the jailbreak that evening, and he's ready for it. Joe, be careful. Sure, sure I'll be careful. I want to breathe. That's why I want out of this place. So I can take a deep breath again. So we cut over to the crime boss, Rick Coyle. And he's the one orchestrating this escape for Joe. And he's played here by Raymond Burr, Perry Mason himself. Now, he is very creepy in this film. Now, the character Spider, Kurt Conway, is questioning why Rick is trying to spring Joe. You know, this is a guy who took a rap for him before, and it's revealed that this big escape will likely lead to Joe being killed. So it's all part of Rick's scheme. Now, another thug named Fantail, he's played by tough guy actor John Ireland. You know, I've seen some of his other films before, like Mr. Soft Touch with Glenn Ford. Well, he's listening in and he's building his house of cards that Rick proceeds to knock down. Well, back at the prison, Pat is waiting outside in a car, nervous, trying to avoid suspicion of cars passing by, when suddenly the prison alarms go off and Joe is crawling his way out. He dodges some bullets, gets into the car with Pat, and they speed off. Now, they're not in the clear yet. The car has taken a bullet, and they need to stop. And they take a cab to Anne's apartment, and Joe sneaks in, creeps through the shadows, and sneaks a kiss from her. Now, of course, she's alarmed and really wants him to turn himself back in, but he won't. And they take her as a prisoner, and they also take her car. Now, she does ask to change her clothes quick, but she uses this as an opportunity to make a phone call. And Joe stops her, gets the key to the car, and the three leave. Now, of course, as you can guess, Pat is jealous of this Anne character, and that tension will play a big part of the film as it continues. Now, when they find out that Anne's car has been identified, 
They stop at a gas station and steal a different but similar car that allows them to get past the cops. Well, the trio, they camp out in the forest for the night and they huddle by a campfire. Now, as a mounted ranger stops by, Joe hides with a gun drawn. And the ranger just asks if they have a camping permit for the fire. Now, the girls put out the campfire and they apologize, with Anne doing all of the talking at this point. So the ranger leaves. Phew, close call. Now, Joe is thankful, but Anne only did this to protect the life of the ranger. And she, at this point, is thoroughly sick of Joe. Well, we cut back to Rick. He's playing cards at his club, and he's annoyed that he hasn't caught Joe yet. And he's about to have his flaming brandy when he gets bumped. And the scene that follows, oh man. The word just came through. Joe Sullivan, he's in the clear. <laughs> the minute they're one shot, you even grease the doors. You're supposed to meet him, Crescent City, tomorrow night. With 50 grand, this sure is your birthday. <laughs> Take her away. She should have been more careful. He's a brute. I don't know why you stick to him. Let's help her to a room. Be careful. I mean, wow. What a temper. You know, I love how the drink is thrown right at us, the viewer. That's a really cool perspective they did with the camera work there. Well, Rick wants Fantail to go and meet with Joe to take care of him. So Joe arrives at the house of Oscar, actor Harry Tyler, where they hide out. He'll have a vehicle for them to use soon. Now, Pat's voiceover continues through the course of the film. Tells us that she just isn't connected to Joe, and he's never told her that he loves her. So you feel sorry for her and kind of her plight in this film. And Joe goes looking for Anne, and she's out alone smoking and enjoying her music, and he tries to force a kiss, and... She's repulsed by him and his way of crime, but he's clearly interested in her, even though it's Pat who is the one that legitimately loves him and cares for him. Now, there's a brief interlude as a man is running through the woods who has apparently killed his wife, and the police are after him. So they turn off the lights at the house, but he still wants to get in. So they let him in, the police arrive, and he runs outside, and he's shot down. Now, Anne makes the comment to Joe that this could be you, so Joe and Anne, they have to hide out while the police come inside the house in order to make a phone call. So Joe goes and drops off Pat and goes with Anne to Grimwald's taxidermy to meet with, he thinks, Rick, before dropping off Anne at a bus stop. Well, Grimwald, played by Tom Faden, one of those goofy character actors I see in a lot of these old films, well, he's there with Fantail, and they're making a house of cards, but not doing so well with it. Well, Joe shows up, and Grimwald takes him back to meet with Fantail. And, of course, he's got the gun drawn, and Joe figures out this was all a setup. And a big fight ensues with both Fantail and Grimwald against Joe, and it's a pretty rough fight scene. At one point, Joe almost causes Fantail to lose an eye on some antlers on the wall. Well, Anne sees what's going on, sees that Joe is overpowered, and seeing a discarded gun on the ground, grabs it and takes out Fantail. Joe finishes Grimwald and pursues Anne out onto the beach, and he comforts her, and it's here that she just embraces him, and she's fallen for the big guy at last, it would seem. But Joe knows that it's the right thing to do, to send her away, so he does, and she finally drives off. Now, Pat's narration continues and makes it seem like she should be happy about this, but she isn't. Well, Joe and Pat, they head to get on their, their ship that's going to take them out of the country, but on the way back, while Anne is at a station to fill up the car, she's spotted by Fantail, who is battered from his fight, but apparently he's still okay, and he pursues her to grab her, and they're going to use her to get to Joe. So Joe and Pat, they're on the boat, and they get ready to go, and it's around here that Rick's men call him to say that they have Anne, but it's Pat who ends up taking the call, and she doesn't tell Joe. Now, she has a way to finally get away with him and have him all to herself. And Anne will be out of the picture for good. So they get to the cabin on their boat, and Joe here proposes marriage. But it's not very heartfelt. 
and he won't even kiss her. It's this very weird, cold relationship, like he's doing it just to make her happy and not out of any sort of genuine affection. It's really an amazing scene here. Just look at her face as she's listening, as he rambles on and on about what he could do in Central America, you know, own a ranch, raise some kids, but it's also mechanical. And all the time, she's just haunted about Anne having been kidnapped and knowing what they will do to her. Now, she finally can't take it anymore. She breaks down and she tells it all to Joe. And you guessed it. He runs back to rescue Anne and get his revenge with Rick. But with only a little bit left of this film, I can't give away the ending. It's pretty epic. You know, will Joe rescue Anne and get his revenge? And will Pat know true love with Joe? And will they escape together? Or does he really just want Anne? Well, you have to see the ending of this film for yourself to see this exciting conclusion. It's a great ending to the film. So now some closing thoughts. Raw Deal was released in 1948. It was produced by Eagle Lion Pictures. I think it may be in the public domain. I'm not sure. With Eagle Lion Pictures, it seems like they generally are. It was directed by Anthony Mann with amazing cinematography by John Alton. I commented on Alton's stylistic work on my previous review of He Walked by Night. With that gorgeous usage of light and shadow and that heavy contrast, Visually, his films are just a treat to watch with the creative ways that he utilizes light and dark. You know, there were many scenes that stood out to me in watching Raw Deal, but most notably was that fight scene in the taxidermy place. The sharp black shadows on the antlers, the fishnet shadows on the ceiling with the loud noises of the fight, combined with the sound of the crashing waves outside, is a great sequence. I also really like that scene towards the end, as you saw Pat struggling with the knowledge that something terrible was going to happen to Anne, and you see her face reflected on the clock. It's also good. You know, it's actually got me looking up some of his other collaborations with Anthony Mann, and I really hope to watch and review these in the future. This was apparently the fourth in a series of noir films that Mann directed in the 40s with the previous film being T-Men, 1947. I'm actually looking forward to getting to that one soon. Maybe next, although I might revisit Tarzan soon. I don't really know. We'll see. So my thoughts on this film are that this was very interesting in that it was a crime story, but told from the perspective of the mall. The character Pat, Claire Trevor's character, kind of interesting there. You know, it wasn't coming from the main protagonist of the film, Joe, but instead from his love interest. And because they do it that way, it sort of gives you a sense of, I don't know, impending doom, knowing that she was the one telling us the narrative of his escape. Now, she clearly loves this lunk, and she just wants to run off with him. And she's willing to do anything for this guy, to break the law and do whatever she can to get away with him. But we do see her broken heart over the realization this guy apparently has feelings for this other woman, Anne, and not her. You know, it's frustrating because you see her and her faithful devotion to this guy, you know, to put her own life in jeopardy for him, and yet he doesn't seem to have any genuine affection for her or show any love towards her through the film. You know, you don't even see him kiss her once. Not so much with the character Anne. So the story really boils down to It's a story of a man who's broken out of prison and he's on the run. He's torn between revenge and getting out of the country, but he's also divided between the good girl and the bad girl. All of these complications have you wondering, not only can this guy get away, but which girl will he end up with? The bad one who loves him and will do anything for him, to which he doesn't seem to care about, and the good girl that he seems to prefer, but who knows he's a criminal and wants him to turn himself in and make things right. You know, I love the complications of this story and seeing ultimately how everything unfolded. Then toss into the mix Raymond Burr as the crime boss, and he is just genuinely nasty. I mean, this guy is a freak with the short temper and the flaming brandy to the face, but the big thing seems to be his paranoia. The Joe will come after him, so he just wants him put down and fast. Now, up until now, I always thought that Raymond Burr was at his creepiest in Hitchcock's rear window, but I have to say, after watching this particular role, I think this tops it as far as his best bad guy role. 
You know, I love the low angles and his large suits that just made him seem that much larger, that much intimidating. And his final confrontation with Joe was epic. Now, Dennis O'Keefe was excellent as a tough guy Joe. He's got that rugged face, the tough guy voice, and we're sympathetic with his character. We want to see him make his escape and get away. All the while, I found his apathy towards his mall, Pat, to be frustrating. Maybe it's just me, but she loved this guy so much and did everything for him, and yet his attention seemed to be drawn to the other girl. Well, that's noir for you, I guess. It just adds to the complication of his character, I suppose. You know, I haven't seen Dennis O'Keefe in many other films, so I'll be watching out for him. I did notice that he is in the film T-Men, so that's another reason I need to check that one out pretty soon. Now, this was the first film I've seen with actress Marsha Hunt. I really thought she was very good here as this woman who reluctantly falls for the bad guy. I did a little research into her background, and it was interesting to read that she died only a couple years ago at age 104. She starred in a number of films before she was investigated by the House Un-American Activities Committee that was trying to flush out communists in Hollywood, and this effectively ended her career in the 1950s. I honestly know very little about that topic, the Un-American Activities Committee, but it does come up from time to time as I research these older films, so I might have to do a separate video on the topic and do a little bit of research on that someday. Another thing noteworthy about this film was the score by Paul Sawtell, and namely his usage of the theremin music, you know, that sound, you know, it makes me at least think of eerie sci-fi films like The Day the Earth Stood Still, but it works well here musically in suggesting the uneasiness of the character Pat and the uncertainty of Joe's fate. So, there's a really great score, and it's not all theremin, but there are orchestral cues as well. So, anyhow, let me wrap this one up. Raw Deal was an excellent crime film from 1948. Again, it had some amazing visuals by director Anthony Mann and cinematographer John Alton. Dennis O'Keefe, Claire Trevor, Marsha Hunt, and Raymond Burr, they were all excellent. And the film really draws you in, keeping you fascinated to see how things turn out if this guy can break out of prison and make his way to freedom, or if going back for revenge is going to be what undoes him. You don't know, so you're going to have to watch for yourself. So this was a fantastic crime film, and it's definitely one that's worth checking out.